The day is finally here and we're able to talk about the brand new Nothing Phone 2 a. This is a new series from Nothing that basically follows in the footsteps of what we've seen with the Nothing Phone 1 and the Nothing Phone 2. Although I kind of feel like it fits in between those two devices, not necessarily a, a follow-up to the two, because that one still technically is a little bit more powerful, because if you think about it, at the price point that the 2A is coming in at about $350, it is crazy the way they're able to put all of the different options that they have in there and still give us the Glyph interface, uh, the experience, Android 14 out of the box, and a lot more with the customized that we have here from Nothing OS 2.5. This is TK and this is the Nothing Phone 2A. Let's check it out and see all the cool new features that come in with this device. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So here we have it, the Nothing Phone 2A. When it comes down to the unboxing experience, it's a pretty much straightforward experience. We get the phone, we get the USB-C to C cable that gives us the ability of obviously uh, charging it and of course data transfer. Uh, the device does support 45 watt charging and this will support it with the cable in there. There's also that SIM removal tool that always looks very unique from Nothing devices. And it's pretty much it, a, uh, basically a box. Uh, everything here is very much minimalistic at, at its core. The device itself, as far as you're looking at, there's two different configurations available in the US market. Now, it is gonna be a little bit different to get this as you typically would, so you can't just go ahead and buy it. You do need to go through the developer program in the US. Just keep in mind that you're able to pick this up in either black or milk color, but you're gonna get 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of internal storage on this. And it's gonna be powered by the MediaTek Dimensity 7200 Pro processor, an upgrade from what we saw from the first generation in Nothing Phone 1 that was running the 778G+. Plus. One thing that I'll probably say is that we're noticing here, we have a dual camera setup on the back. And the reason behind that is because we're not actually uh, including a filler sensor, meaning that two megapixel macro sensor or depth sensor that some companies do. We have a dual 50 megapixel camera sensors in here. The primary one's gonna be the GN9 from Samsung, and the secondary one's gonna be the JN1. Both 50 megapixel cameras, and it's gonna give us basically a standard focal range as well as an ultra wide, which makes it more functional into what we usually would get. Now, when we switch it over to the front facing camera here, we do have a punch hole camera that's positioned at the top. It's a 32 megapixel camera and that's going to be the IMX615. Now it is a 32 megapixel camera upgraded from the 16 on the Nothing Phone 1. The 5050 are obviously upgraded as well sensors from the original one. The display that we have here is a 6.7 inch display AMOLED panel. Let's go ahead and go back to the home screen. And what I like about it is the flexible AMOLED which gives us the ability of getting that nice little uh, kind of like a continuing bezel experience across the entire device. It is a flat device on the top and on the bottom and if you position it correctly you're able to actually get it to stand up which is definitely nice. The color does permeate throughout the back. Now it is a see-through design on the back and as you see here this is not a wireless coil. This is actually just the design on the inside and you can see here the red dot. You can see the different areas, the LED, the wiring, all of that. The Glyph interface is basically uh, more kind of limited to be in the top part of the device as what we've typically seen from other versions of the Nothing Phone like here with the Nothing Phone 2 where it kind of goes across and this one actually does have wireless solution. But as far as the battery we have a 5000 milliampere battery. Again a 45 watt wire charging, a dual SIM tray here with 5G capabilities, a bottom firing speaker married to the top earpiece let's go ahead and bring this back here and that's going to give us stereo speakers in here as well a power button on the right side and of course we have a volume rocker on the left the material that is used here is definitely more of uh, not necessarily as heavy as what we get with the phone 2 it feels a little bit lighter and that's primarily because of the materials they used here it does have an ip54 rating which is higher than the original nothing phone one which is an ip53 uh, the display here can go all the way up to 120 hertz and of course you can customize it let's go ahead and go back here you have the Nothing Launcher, the 2.5 Launcher, and as you see here, I'm running this actually really cool wallpaper uh, that's a Goku wallpaper that I'm able to run on the lock screen, which gives us a live wallpaper, as well as just going into our device. The UI, very much familiar with what we've seen from Nothing. We have access to the Wi-Fi, as well as the mobile data, Bluetooth connectivity, the Glyph interface, all the offers in here, everything in there positioned the way we have it. If we go into the Glyph interface, it's pretty straightforward. Now, one of the really nice things about it is, which used to be an Easter egg in the Glyph interface in the past, is the ability of actually getting the music virtualization option. Now it's actually built in directly. In the past, we used to have to put in a code to be able to get it. Now it's just in there, you can turn it on and it'll start playing the colors as you're playing new music. Obviously there's different routines in here, customizations. We also have the composer built in here, as well as the fact that we have some of their collaboration. So there's the Fantasy, the Samba, the Swedish House Mafia, and of course, if I'm not mistaken, the 606, the Burr and the Dan, all of those 
those are in there and you're actually able to customize and create your own. So I actually went in there and I did my own. We also have a nice game mode configuration installed here that you're able to customize the different games, uh, the multi-touch prevention, in incoming call intelligence, and they can jump into the game dashboard, customize it, and it'll pop up whenever a game that's added to the gaming list. If it's not automatically added, uh, they'll be able to basically show up there. Now I did use the game mode to be able to run a, a couple of uh, benchmarks on here to show you guys how the phone runs normally and how does it run in game mode to provide you the best performance. And then of course, all of that configured with the app tray. Uh, now for the most part, the theme seems to work perfectly fine except for then certain applications. So like speed test seems like it actually matches there. Geekbench definitely looks really good. And some of the other social media applications work really good. But then when we start looking at Call of Duty Mobile and Netflix, it seems like the theme doesn't support them yet. And I'm hoping we'll be able to see an update to that. Access to the Google Play Store, of course, 5G support here in the US. Let's go ahead and turn off the Wi-Fi. And I'm going to turn off Wi-Fi in there. And of course, as you can see here, I am connected here on T-Mobile with 5G connectivity in the US. I did run a few speed tests. Again, it does register 5G on the network itself with T-Mobile. And of course, you'll see here the different experiences. So it's definitely not going to be any issues using it in the US market. It is designed to work here. Again, two different colors available for us. Um, as far as the actual configuration of what we have in here, now we are running the Dimensity 7200 Pro from MediaTek. Now this one is a four nanometer processor, which it makes it really nice, a nice upgrade from the six nanometer on the seven gen, well, the 778G plus uh, from the uh, first nothing phone one. Camera again, as I mentioned to you guys, 50 megapixel primary with OIS, 50 megapixel uh, camera for ultra wide. And of course we have the 32 megapixel camera, front facing camera, uh, 4K 30 frames per second is gonna be the maximum we're gonna be able to do. That's primarily limited by the processor. 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of internal storage, and we're able to add additional RAM in here. And of course, we have a 5,000 milliampere battery, a screen is 6.7 inch flexible AMOLED, and of course, Android 14 running on a Nothing OS 2.5.3. And this is the latest version. There was a couple of updates that they pushed out. Now, when it comes down to the camera experience, which a lot of us are going to start talking about, again, we have a dual camera setup on the back. Video recording is going to be capped at 4K 30 frames per second. Unfortunately, there is no 4K 60, but you are able to go down to 1080p 60. The front facing camera is also limited to 1080p either 60 or 30 frames per second. And that's going to be some of the limitations what we get here with the process. Processor. Again, this is not trying to compete with the Nothing Phone 2. It's providing us another option, a lot more affordable option at $350 in the market that we're in. Uh, we have photo mode, we have portrait mode, of course, and we're looking at more options between time-lapse, panorama, and expert. Let's go ahead and jump outside real quick and then do a quick sample of the front-facing and the main-facing sensors on the back for video samples. Starting off with the main sensor on the front here, we have the ability of shooting 1080p 30 frames per second resolution and 1080p 60 frames. I'm actually recording at 1080p 60 right now. The biggest difference here is that we don't actually have the ability of changing the resolution. So we don't have 720 or 4K, it's 1080p, and it's basically 30 or 60 frames, depending on the experience that you're going to be shooting. If it's high movement, 60 is going to work better for you. And of course, if you don't, you don't need to get the larger file sizes. But let's switch over to the main sensor on the back, and we're actually able to shoot 4K 30 frames per second. They are actually on both the ultra wide and the main sensor. Now we're shooting on the ultra wide sensor on the back. Again, 4K 30 on both main and ultra wide. And I think that's a little bit uh, better experience than what we get on the front. The front one's going to be okay for video. Let's say if you're doing a video call or something like that. But for the best recording on this device, you need to use either the main sensor or the ultra wide. The biggest thing I'll probably say is 4K 30 is going to be the limit of what we're able to process here. So that's one of the things limiting us by the fact of what we have as far as the processor. But overall, I think it's still pretty decent. I hope you guys like the audio and video experience here on the Nothing Phone 2A. Now, as you saw there, the video looks absolutely great, as well as the audio, actually, surprisingly, from what we get in here. Now, to turn on Wi-Fi again, all you have to do is swipe back, click on it, and swipe it, uh, all of there. And you have the other options in there as far as the ear, too. You'll notice I actually have them connected in here. You can configure them, go in there, and you actually configure all of their options directly from the Bluetooth settings. This is typical to some of the other options we've seen in the past. Here under Bluetooth, you're able to switch over and see the different devices that you have connected. But let's Let's go ahead and play a quick sample of an audio here on the speakers that we have in here. We do have stereo speakers. This is our favorite song, uh, Scrindo Jumbo by NCS Release. Now, as you heard there, it definitely sounds pretty nice. It's not the loudest speaker that we're going to get here, but providing us that stereo experience gives it a little bit more of a fuller experience because when we start talking about games, that actually helps a lot. So jumping over real quick to the Call of Duty mobile game, let's go ahead and launch the game. You'll notice out of the box, let's go ahead and reduce the volume because I don't want it to actually uh, start hitting us with a lot of the, uh, the game option that I have on the side here. I have it turned on. We do have a game center here at the game dashboard. You can turn on the uh, recording option, the frame rate, do not disturb, of course, optimizations configured. Of course, when we start playing the game, we're gonna get the best experience in there. Now, as far as the benchmark, before we go too far, 
I ran the benchmark on the system in two different configurations. Out of the box, I ran the benchmark without turning any game functionality on. We ran about 604 and 1003 for the single and the multi-core. But then when we turn on the game mode, you'll notice that it actually does start to push the system a little bit more further. And we're up to basically 1107 on single core and 2571 on multi-core. Keep in mind, you do need to go into the gaming uh, game system here and you actually need to add that as a game. So that's one of the uh, options in there to be able to get that experience. But otherwise, it's pretty much uh, what you'd expect when it comes down to gaming, as I'm showing you guys a quick sample there, uh, 90 frames per second, consistent gaming in Call of Duty Mobile, and actually really runs very nice. Sound experience is actually pretty decent. You're able to actually hear where your enemies are coming from because of the stereo experience. Sometimes at this price point, we lose stereo speakers, and that kind of hinders the experience because if the sound's always coming from the right side, you're never going to know if somebody's coming from your left. And here with this, it definitely looks and operates very nicely. I was recording the screen at the same time as playing, and the device did not have any issues. Now, when it comes down to price and availability, it is going to be available in multiple markets. In the US, there's just going to be two colors, the black and the milk color, and both are available through the developer program. So if you follow the link that I give you in the description below, sign up for it. Once approved, you'll be able to pick up the device again for that 350 price point. And the biggest thing about that is they're looking for feedback. So obviously, if you have feedback, any concerns or anything as you're using it, it's not going to disappoint. And you'll be able to contribute to the nothing story for the near, their next phone in the future, which I feel like is a very nice thing. Hopefully at some point it becomes just available for everybody depending on the demand. I can't really speak to that. They didn't share that with me yet. But I will say that I am very, very impressed with what they were able to do and for how much they're asking for. It's a great little device. It's definitely a budget friendly device at the price point it's coming in. The performance is hitting more of a mid-ranger experience. Again, the 7200 Pro from, the, uh, from MediaTek is a dimensity processor. It's a four nanometer processor. It won't disappoint. I will probably say though, if you're snapping a lot of images right after each other, the processing does take a little bit longer, but again, Keep in mind the price point that you're coming in with. And as you see here with those images and videos I'm sharing, they definitely do not disappoint. Let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of the brand new Nothing Phone 2A? Do you like the A series of these devices? And what do you think of the price point? I mean, 350 bucks. I mean, are they really making any money on this device? Because everything in here is built from really good materials and the experience is not compromised. An upgrade to the Nothing Phone 1 and definitely a very close small brother to the Nothing Phone 2. Of course, thank you very much for the support. I'll see you in the next video.